Okay, I'm going to go over a uh, fairly complicated uh, capital budgeting analysis. Um, and I like this problem. Uh, one of the students asked if I would make a video on how to do this on, on Excel. So I got this problem from uh, Principles of Finance with Excel from Simon Beninga and Tel Mufkati. So if you're looking for a good book on how to uh, model financial problems on Excel, I, I highly recommend it. So this book, uh, one of the things that provides the student resources is, is templates for a lot of the problems, for most of the problems. So this is a template that came right out of the book. And we'll go ahead and use that in order to solve the problem. So the first thing it says is you are the owner of a factory located in, in a hot climate. And the monthly production of the factory is $100,000 per year, except for the summer months when the production falls 20000 Monthly production falls 20000 per month during the summer months of June through September. <clears throat> so, you, you, this is, so you get an offer to install air conditioning system in your factory, and the cost of the system is $150,000. It's expected to last 10 years with no salvage value, of course. And if you install the, the system, the production of the summer months will equal the 100000 you normally get in the non-summer months. However, the cost of operating is going to be $9,000 extra in the, in the months you operate it. And also at the end of the summer period in October, you're going to have to pay $5,000 in maintenance on the system for each of the 10 years. Um, we're going to assume the depreciation and costs are recognized in December, and they're paid in December of each year. And we're going to use straight lease and straight line depreciation to a zero value which is also the anticipated terminal value of zero. Um, and it asks, what is the December equivalent pre-tax and pre-depreciation annual profits? And uh, what is the net, net present value of this air conditioning system if the discount rate is 12% and the corporate tax is 35%? So you can see we have the numbers here, the discount rate and the tax. Now this, uh, this spreadsheet put this in here twice, so I guess we could kind of get rid of this because that's kind of confusing we got it here already up here so we'll just go ahead and ignore it we don't need to put it twice cost is 150,000 so they're just repeating 10 year life it says it's going to last 10. if it's straight line depreciation they went ahead and did it in the template $150,000 divided by 10 is $15,000 of depreciation you're allowed to take each year for tax purposes um Operating cost is nine thousand, so you can see a lot of this is pre just repeated. This is in uh, this said it was in October, right? So we could go ahead and say in October. Uh, oh, it says it right there. I'm sorry, it says it over here. And then the production, the addition is twenty thousand dollars, and we know it's twenty thousand dollars because it says. If you do the AC, it goes from 80000 up to twenty. So that's where that came from. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and fill in this template. And it asks for additional output. So we know it's going to be zero uh, here. And when and then it says uh, June through September is where uh, where we start getting getting some benefits of the AC. So I'll go ahead and June is going to be equal to... Uh, $20,000. I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 here and then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down for the four months you're going to be running the AC. And then finally in October, uh, well I guess we'll just go ahead and leave it at zero because this asks for additional output. So in October we're not running the AC anymore and it's going to be zero those three months. Okay, so operating costs, uh, it's going to start out with zero. And again, it's going to go zero all the way till we start running the AC. And I assume this would probably, probably be like electric costs. I'm going to go ahead and equals $9,000 a month. Again, I'm going to F4 because I want to copy it down. And I'll copy it down. And then in October, we have an additional cost of $5,000. We have zero and zero. So that's the operating cost. Now the depreciation... It says it says in the in the book it's paid at the end of the year, and it's fifteen thousand dollars a year. So this is going to be zero on each one of these. And I'll go ahead and copy the zero all the way down till December, 
In December, the depreciation cost is $15,000 per year. So now we want the equivalent December cash flow. So, um, so basically we've got to do, we have to, I'll, I'll just go ahead and do it and hopefully it will make sense to you here. So, um, um, I'm, uh, there's two ways to do it. So I'll do it the way I would do it. So you're going to go equals. And first of all, we want to, let me do it on one that, one that we have actual numbers here. So it's going to be equal to, uh, first you want to take the value of it at that time. So it's going to be equal to the, so I, I want to take the value of this at this time and project it up into December. So I'm going to say it's equal to the, the future value. And the rate we're going to use is going to be our discount rate, which is 12%. And I'm going to have four of that because I want to copy this formula around. Now, the number of periods that I want to project it up. Oh, by the way, I want to, I want to divide that by 12. And the reason I want to divide that by 12 is because this is the an annual rate and these are months, right? And I want to project it up to December, right? And the number of periods are just going to be equal to, now here's a problem. Uh, I want to click on December. December would be month 12, but I don't have it in here. So um, I'm just going to click on that right now, and I'll change it to a 12 liter. And then the number, and then the payment we're going to make. Well, there's no payment. This is going to be considered a, a present value, which is going to be projected at you know six months into the future. So I'll, I'll just skip that and do another comma. I could type zero there. And the present value, so I want my answer to be positive, so I'm going to say it's a negative parentheses, this minus this. So I, I'm getting, I'm getting, I want the answer to be positive, so I made that negative. So basically, I'm getting $20,000, and I'm spending 9000 so I'm making it a negative 11000 here. That way my answer will be positive, Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that future value. So uh, now this has to be taxed, right? So we want the cash flow. So we have to subtract taxes out. So then we're going to take that times uh, one. Let me do a parenthesis. Uh, parenthesis one minus the tax rate, which is right here. And I want to F4 that too because I want to copy that formula down. And then finally, I want to add, even though I don't have a benefit of depreciation, I want to add in, and if there was a benefit of depreciation, remember, I'm going to copy this both up and down, so I want to add this in because I have a number here. So if there was a number here, if I would have some type of benefit of depreciation in June, well, I would take that times the tax rate. That would be the, the benefit, and I'm going to go ahead and hit F4 again here. So, uh... So that would be the formula in order to cal cal to bring this cash flow up to the up to December. So I find the future value. I'm going to bring it up uh, six months. So I had to divide it by twelve to get the months, and then uh, and then I have to take that times. I have to take I have to take the taxes out because it's a cash flow. It's not you know what is it worth to the company, and we have to use the tax rate. And finally, we have to adjust. Uh, we get that benefit of depreciation. It gives us more cash because we can deduct that from our income. We only, but it's only going to give us the benefit of 35%. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Now I made a mistake here. Let me see what I did wrong. Uh, times one minus B3, B12 divided by 12, A26. Oh, A26. I'm going to put 820, and I know I must remember I told you there's supposed to be a number here, but I, I see a mistake anyway. I should F4 of this, and then I'm going to subtract the month. I'm going to put numbers here right now, and the month would be here. Okay. And then hit, let me hit enter, and I'm going to put, I'm going to change these for month one, two, three, because Excel doesn't operate, you know, it's not going to operate on December. It has to use 12. So we put that like that, and we get 2589. 87. So, um, and then I can copy this formula up 
and I can copy it down. And then the equivalent cash yield will just be equal to the sum of these 12. So that's the, that's the equivalent free cash flow you get at each December of each year while you're running the thing. Now this is this is the way I would do it. This is my solution. Now the book does it slightly different. Let me put the formula in here. Kind of a long formula. But uh now the book, the way they would do it, let me do it the book solution. They just do it the long way. So let me just do it right here. I'm going to do it again where we have numbers. So it's going to be equal to parentheses. Again, it's going to be this minus this. And then we're going to use the, we're going to take that times. Uh, so we want to know, uh, we want to take it times parentheses, uh, one minus the tax rate and this time I'm not going to divide it by I'm not going to divide it by 12 because they're going to use a yearly tax rate so I'm going to hit F4 and then I have to take that to a power and I want to take that to uh, the, the the fraction of a year up to December so that's going to be equal to uh, parentheses uh, there's 12 months in the year I'm going to F4 it, minus the month I'm at right now, close the parentheses, and the fraction of the year is going to be divided by 12. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I'll show you in a second. Let me move this out of the way. We don't really need this. Okay, so I'm still not done. Let me, let me, uh, let me move this. Okay, so, so now I've got, that's basically what I did with the future value function on the other one. Then I have to take that times parentheses, 1 minus the tax rate. Hopefully this is making sense. I'll explain a little bit. Now again, I'm going to have to F4 the tax rate because I want that to stick there. And then again, I'm going to add back the depreciation. So I'm going to go uh, the depreciation and then times uh, the tax rate. F4 that. Okay. And hit enter. All right, so I think I made a little mistake. Just let me double check. Doesn't look correct. These are easy to make a mistake. You just got to kind of double check things. That minus that times one minus that. This for the fraction. So I can evaluate. This is a little thing. I made a mistake, so I want to see where I made the mistake. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I can go into formulas and then go, uh, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to double click. I just want to click on it and I go evaluate formula and then I go evaluate and it starts showing you what these things are. So I go step in, step in. So that's $9,000. Let me try it a different way. I haven't done this evaluate for a while. I'm going to go evaluate. I'm just going to keep clicking evaluate. So it highlights that and it tells me that's $11,000. That's right so far. And then it does this. So that's all. I see where I made a mistake. I did minus here. Right? I already know where I made a mistake. So I can hit close. So this should be one. This should be one plus the interest rate and then that's the right answer so you can see this so uh, let me go ahead and copy this formula up and down and copy it down you can see it very slightly from from what I did hope I don't need these two okay so it varies let me make this two decimal home And let me copy this formula. So you can see it very slightly from what I did because this compounds it. It uses the annual interest rate and compounds it the fraction of the year. 
I use a monthly interest rate and I compound it at the number of months. So I, I'm getting I'm getting monthly compounding and this is yearly compounding. So that's why these numbers vary just a little bit. But I get a very similar answer. Let me copy these formulas down. Copy these formulas down. Let me copy this. Let me copy this. Let me copy these both. All right, so it's it's off by a little bit, and that's just because I did it at monthly compounding. This is compounded at just the fraction. It uses the annual interest rate and compounded at the fraction of a year. Okay. All right, so, in fact, if you let me go back to this evaluate. If I go back to uh, formulas, evaluate. If I step in, you can see this is 11,000. This is that's That's the annual interest rate. If I keep stepping in, 12 minus 6 is keep going. I'm going I'm going a half a year, right? I'm only going for a half a year. Here I was going six months. So this is the annual interest rate to a half a year, so it's not compounding. So the book did not compound, and I compounded. I assume that you got this $11,000 right here. You're going to invest it, and you're going to compound it. You know, you're going to invest that each month. So that's just, it's just a slightly different way. Both ways are correct. It just depends on your philosophy there. All right, so now let's go ahead and start filling this table in. So first of all, we're gonna we're gonna spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars right here in year zero. We're not gonna have any free cash flow. We haven't sold it, and then what we want to do? We want to add all these numbers together. So I'm gonna go home, underline so we can see what we're doing here. And so this is gonna be the sum. Of these three, you're not going to sum the zero up above. Okay, and then we're not spending, we're not having any more, we're not ha having any more capital expenditures for the ten years of the life. Now here is where I'm just, I'm not going to use this number. I'm going to use the book solution, even though you could use this number and you get very close to the NPV. So I'll go ahead. It is equal to this. I'm going to go ahead and F for it. So this is the this is the equivalent annual free cash flow the December equivalent and uh, I don't have to take it out two places but I like to see things two places so let's go like that and then the terminal value well we're not going to spend any money now the terminal value is how much it's worth at the end of the year or at the end of this life and this time it said the terminal value is zero and I can copy this all the way across so those are my numbers and then finally I can go equals NPV and the net present value we're going to use the cost of capital and remember NPV starts from year one on it doesn't use year zero and we're going to add year one outside of that and that would give you the book solution right there okay All right, so if you're going to use this number, you can just put that in there instead. So basically, I was telling you the net present value is, is above zero. So if you're just considering this project without looking at other projects you might do during the year, um, you would take it, right? Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. That, that video went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I was kind of showing you how to evaluate these these equations. It's kind of interesting to use that formulas evaluate to kind of if you make a mistake and I that's why I, sometimes I'll see if I made a mistake very a little bit quicker for me to see so all right so thanks for your for watching as always I'm going to put my picture up here if you want to subscribe to my channel um, if you like the video go ahead and put like and um, hopefully that was helpful for you bye